We're looking at downhill ski racer Werner Franz of Austria. 10,000 feet away and 2,600 feet down Ajax Mountain lies the world-class resort of Aspen, Colorado. In a matter of seconds, Franz will be doubled over in an aerodynamic tuck at speeds in excess of 70 miles an hour. After heavy snow postponed yesterday's run of the Aspen Roche Cup, Franz and those who will follow have had 24 hours extra to consider the challenge ahead. As a supporting player on the powerhouse Austrian team, Franz will get to the bottom and report back to his four highly regarded teammates, ready to pass his descent, Bob Biatti and Todd Brooker. And he is on the race course right now, Todd. I think that you have to realize that he is very good on the flats. On the tougher part, he should be good, but you know, having to start with all this new snow, starting so early could be a problem. Nobody ever wants to be number one, especially when there has been new snow. He's kind of the guinea pig, but I'll tell you, a lot of the best racers have chosen the early numbers because they figure the flats are going to get a little bit faster. Further down in this course, I think the ruts will develop. That's kind of the trade-off. These flats will get faster up above. And here's the way it looks from across the valley. We can see it's still snowing lately here, but as far as the races are concerned, the course is in good shape. I would also might like say that there are really two different race courses here. The top part relatively flat, but then when they hit Aztec, it's another adventure. Everybody's concerned, the racers that is, about having a fair race today. The weather may not be perfect, but it is very consistent. There is no snow squalls like there was yesterday where the visibility is poor. Today it's going to be fair, I think, for all the racers. We'll be able to check out Franz's time across the flats here and prepare that for training. Where to come, we're looking at the racer number one right down here, who was second in Bengen, Switzerland, right behind Kyle Rasmussen of the United States, who won that event. snow and that is where the risk is really going to come to play in this course. Catching edges is going to be very easy, Bob. They said that they thought the lower part of this course was right on the edge of the speed that they could take for a downhill. And with all this new snow, that has to be a concern. Perfect conditions, though. The race crew has done a great job. And Lawrence has hit a pretty nice run as he comes into the finish. And through the finish line, what? is underway. Well, we have the first racer down. After four days of heavy snow, it appears that Mother Nature will step aside and allow the Men's World Cup Downhill Tour to make one of its most prestigious visits of the year. Welcome to the Aspen Roche Cup Men's World Cup Downhill. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Barsha. If you were with us for yesterday's postponement of this event, you know that the story this weekend here in Aspen has been snow. Too much of it. But last night, we only got four to six inches. And this morning here in Aspen, the call went out on local radio. Any skier in town who wanted to come up and side slip or free ski this course to help move that thin layer of snow could do so. The course is now ready. And as you've just seen, the race is underway. We have all of the top stars in the world here, with the exception of American Olympic gold medalist Tommy Moe, Yesterday we told you that he banged up some ribs in a Super G in Canada last weekend, and he's resting at his home in Jackson, Wyoming. Tommy, if you're looking in, we wish you a speedy recovery. But for the first time in years here in Aspen, the U.S. ski team is not a one-man operation. It is a powerhouse group. For more on them now, let's rejoin Bob Biatti, the 1983 Aspen winner, Todd Brooker. Well, it's a powerhouse group, and you know, I never thought there'd be a ski race here today with all the snow, almost three feet, that we got yesterday and last night. But Todd, the snow is, well, it's been slipped up. You came down and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? I was down early this morning. You know, it got cold last night and that enabled the workers here and the machines to get up there and move the hills. And from Aztec down, it is very, very slick and icy. It's actually pretty nice conditions. Up on top, though, it's going to be very slow as a lot of new snow has fallen last night. But look at now, the sun is starting to come out again. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. team. I know as a Canadian, this is sometimes a little difficult for you. But this sport is an individual one in that you come down one at a time. But there's a tremendous team aspect. Tommy Moe, as we know, is not here. But A.J. Kidd is, and Kyle Rasmussen, and this team is hungry. Well, Rasmussen has got a lot of confidence. A great race for him, his first victory in Bengen just a couple of weeks ago. These guys are skiing strong, and I'll tell you, when you live together, you have the happy feeling in the dining room. Everything is turning out good for them. There's a look at our next skier, Pietro Vitalini of Italy, and by any measure, Bob, he has had an interesting 1995. 
Well, he certainly has earlier this winter. We're here in Kispiel, Austria, right here, and Bittellini took the fall of the winter, as far as I'm concerned. The conditions are bulletproof, and across this fall away, it's always tricky, and Bittellini went pop and roll over the fence. I'll tell you one thing, it was all that soft snow that really saved his bacon. You know, it, it really was. Okay, now we have Bittellini here in Aspen, Colorado. By the way, in Kitzbühel, Austria, he came up in the second run of that day, went all the way back to the top after that fall and ended up fifth. He's been fifth three times this winter, including last week in Whistler Mountain. That was a courageous run, absolutely incredible. Where he fell normally without all that snow is nothing but rocks and grass and lots of spectators. He was a very lucky man. Bittellini coming down, Aztec heading into the airplane turn. This course is starting to get a little bit rougher than I suspected it would be. He's a winner. George get tough too. Trying to get on this little road and you have just a few seconds. And then we hit the fast lower part of the course. <laughs> and he's really cooking, isn't he? By 91 hundreds of a second. Anytime you have a course that's got a little bit of soft snow, these big GS turns down here in the bottom, the skiers have to roll into them really smoothly. Don't get on the edges too hard. Look at that time. Well, everybody always talks about the great Austrian team, and truly they are great. But this winter, also the Italians are good. And what happens here? Bittellini takes the lead by over a second and a half. Now at the start, we were talking about Kitzbühel, Austria, and Bittellini's fall. This man won two downhills in the same day. The first to ever win two downhills in the same day. This course a little bit slower because of all that soft snow, the time on the right just shows that first quick six seconds out of the start, 50 miles an hour, but remember it is so flat up there, you start losing speed, it's important to have every tenth of a second up there you can. You know, I really like Alpine, some people say he's a little bit crazy, he's also the friendliest guy on the tour. Years ago, he was hanging off of a chief with another friend of his came by and tore his whole leg off almost. <laughs> there he is back ski racing. I guess the moral of the story is don't ride with ski racers, right, Todd? <laughs> well, they can quite often can be dangerous. I'll find out until this year has had a lot of spectacular crashes on the World Cup. That's one thing that he has been known for. He's settled down to ski, he's a lot more consistent, and obviously, winning races, he is skiing well. And here he is, the overall World Cup downhill winner. The, the overall downhill leader, I should say, at this moment is not over yet. Little behind at the moment. Now there's a big difference between the kind of snow that we're seeing in the top flats and the snow that we're seeing from this point down to the bottom. A lot more moisture down here. And if the skis are running in the top, that may not be a good sign. They may not be running down here in this lower portion. And he's lost even more time. And this is surprising to me because in the turns, it's usually where our bond is so good. Skis obviously a big part of the speed down here. And as he comes through the finish line, he's over a second behind. Not a good run for him, and more snow is coming in. This ESPN World of Skiing presentation, the Aspen Roche Cup, is brought to you by 100% Colombian coffee, the richest coffee in the world, and picked by Juan Valdez. By Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Isuzu, makers of the four-wheel drive trooper, marathon champion in last year's Paris-Dakar rally.
Welcome back to snowy Aspen, Colorado. Officials standing by as we are finally, it appears, going to get the Aspen Roche Cup Men's World Cup downhill in. Here's a look at the downhill standings. These are just downhill. Luke Alfan, as Bobby Addy mentioned earlier, leads over Christian Godina and Armin Asker. We'll see both of those gentlemen a little bit later on. In the overall standings, this has been the year of Alberto Tamba skiing only the slalom and GS. He and Yuri Kozir of Slovenia have divided up most of the spoils. Now back to Bob and Todd. In the starting gate, one of the strongest racers on the World Cup circuit, Christian Godina from Italy. Only 25 years of age, has won two downhills this winter, Bengen, Switzerland, and then last week, up in Whistler Mountain, British Columbia. He's also been a little bit lucky, too, up in Whistler. If you didn't have an early starting number, you had absolutely no chance on that court, of course, because of the wet conditions. You know, I happened to be in Cortina, Italy, his hometown, when he won in Bengen, and the whole town went absolutely nuts. As a matter of fact, it seems like everybody in town has the name of Godina. Godina is such a good-looking skier, very compact style. Made that airplane tear look really smooth as he was able to get back on his tuck early, and he's got a chopping a half a second off the fastest time. Well, he's probably the hottest racer on the circuit right now. Talking to his coach a couple of days ago, he said, you know, Godina just raced to survive after he was injured in an automobile accident in 1991. It was in a coma for several days, but now he's really coming on and trying to win, and he is winning, but he lost a little bit of time. Still has the lead, though. Truly inspired. You see the way he's driving towards down the finish here. And Godina from Italy. He will be tough to beat today. Has the lead. And now it's Armin Asinger. And this 30-year-old Austrian, I think is one of the toughest races on the circuit, frankly. He is really strong. And if he's a good on the top, and with all that weight, he should really be strong. And can handle those turns. He would also be tough today. We should be looking for a fast time for him up on the flat section. He's been a great friend of mine, but he's had a lot of knee problems in his past. Not this year. He said his knees are feeling great, and that's enabled him to get some good results. Third in the World Cup downhill standing so far. This is his last year. He's going to be retiring after this winter. Godina looking on at the finish line, but Asinga has the lead right now by 14 hundredths of a second. Nicely rolling into that right-hand turn. you got to put the edge out there and just stand on Asinger powering through these gates. Power is the word, isn't it, in downhill ski racing now, and he's gaining time. This man is big and powerful. He's about six foot five inches tall. Uses the tail of his skis well, sitting back down there. He is increasing his lead. And through the finish line, I am quite surprised. Asinger by over five tenths of a second. Well, as you come off the top flats and you're heading into Aztec, the snow is fairly soft. You can see the way Asinger is bearing his edge in the snow there. That doesn't often happen in the steep, icy downhill. But now as he heads down the steep pitch, the most important thing here is get this first turn done early. Get, get well set up to the left so you can attack to the right. And strength doesn't hurt. Now here's Asinger's line. See the way he came from way over to the left. He's going to cut across, and that's going to enable him to get up very, very high, get some good direction. Lots of soft snow on the left-hand side. You don't want to be wide on that low line. And as he comes through these next two gates, look at the way he's right on. You've got to be bang on all those GS turns through Aztec to be fast. Okay, we talk about Austrians, and we talk about large ones, and here's another one, Patrick Ortley. 1992. Oh, champion from Albertville. We've said it before, but these guys are more like linebackers. The Austrian lineup, over six feet tall. Ortlieb is about 215 pounds. Gives him a lot of momentum on the flats, but his skis also have to be running. Skis are always very important here in Aspen. What ever happened to the short, quick little guys that we used to see in ski racing? They've disappeared. They sure have. This is a sport for the tough and for the very strong. When well, you've got a Power your way through ruts and so on, the stronger you are, the more likely you are to be able to survive on this kind of course. 70 miles an hour as he heads on Dago Road. Well, I'll tell you, that shot gives you a pretty good idea of the speed they're carrying, doesn't it? So much momentum down here. Really, all the skiers have to do is put their ski on edge. But Ortley will not be happy. He can feel that he's slowing down. He's lost a lot of time now, Bob. Well, they say that you lose races in the turns, and he's doing that here today. As he comes through the finish line, 84 hundredths of a second behind. Not a very good time for him. There's the leader in the clubhouse, Armin Assinger of Austria, a man who favors the American lifestyle and a man looking ahead to retirement. You can bet he'd like great performance here today. Stay with us.
Today's course description. Oh, it Actually, is. we oh, never did a okay. new one. Fine. Okay. Coming up Monday here on ESPN, the Newsweek Champions Cup Tennis Tournament. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Pacific. Live, great tennis action here on ESPN. All the greats on hand. It should be a great final. 3 p.m. Eastern. Now let's get back to the top of Aspen Mountain with Bob Yaddy and Todd Brooker. Norwegian star, Utley Skardal, 29 years of age. He's been second in the World Cup downhill standings three times, 90, 91, and 93, but hasn't had a very good year this year. Only one fourth place, and that's the only time in the top 10. That was at a long course in Vengen, but look at this out at the start. He's four 100 to the second ahead. Just a very short section, but still you want to build up speed as early as you can. Now this is the new part of the course right in here, Bob. A couple new turns that they put in, and the section where Skirtle is right now is actually coming back uphill again. Well, you know, I'm talking to a lot of the racers, and some of them say I like it, and some say they don't. Some say you gain more speed out of it, that you were slowed down going in for good reason. It's so fast. Let's see if we can tell by his turns how he's doing here. Well, they've tried to make the top part of this course a little a little bit more technical, a little more challenging, so it isn't as steep, but no question down here in Aztec and heading into airplane turn, this is where it really rocks. You can see that outside ski just shaking all over the place. It's hard to keep your weight on that downhill ski with these ruts starting to build up. The temperature difference down here, much different. The snow has got a lot more moisture, and this is the area where you really start catching a lot more edges down here. As a racer, you want to be very delicate. Old Norwegian team not having the year that they had last year. They built for the Olympics, and now they seem to be having a down year. They don't know what's going on, but he's very close. Skarno is really attacking this hill. He has skied the Lord Park very well. Very close, but he lost time down there. 43 hundredths of a second behind. Boy, I'll tell you. Now, Mark Giordelli, five-time overall World Cup champion, the Austrian who skis for Luxembourg. Giordelli won his first overall World Cup championship way back in 1985, but he's having a tough winter this year. He hasn't been in the top 10 of a downhill. I find that surprising. I talked to him in the press center for a second the other day. He just laughed when I asked him how he was making out. He said, I don't know. He said, I'm trying my best in downhill. You see him scraping his inside here there on the turn, really banking inside. I was just going to say, there's one reason right there why he's having trouble. He's not really having the confidence to lean out of those turns. Into the airplane turn, he tried to hold his tuck a little bit too long. He really got rattled around. That's really showing up at this time. Some of you recreational skiers, you know you're not going to go this fast. Watch how these guys go around those turns and try to carve as much as they can. Giordelli holding a nice tuck down here in the bottom, but he knows that he's made mistakes. He's got to try and recover from him. But it may be too late in this run. He's not very happy with this season. We'll see how this run is. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near close. And it's not. Over a second behind for Mike Giordelli, one of the great ski racers of all time. Well, Bob, as you mentioned earlier, this course is very different from top to bottom. It's also very different from training day back on Thursday to race day on Sunday. Todd Brooker took a look earlier. Well, a lot of work has gone into trying to get this course prepared for today's race. It may look hard and smooth, but I sure don't think it's going to stay that way. Look at this. When I kick my edge in there, all that soft snow that I can kick up, and that's really going to affect the skiers, particularly in the later numbers. Now, up on the top part of the course where it's relatively flat, and the turns are fairly gentle coming around, that's not going to be a big deal. But here in the middle of the course, in Aztec, where the turns are really coming back and forth across the fall line and the pitch is really steep. That's going to be a big problem. Down here in the lower section of this turn in particular, a lot of manpower has gone into shoveling all this soft snow off to the side. But the early start numbers in today's race are really going to be a benefit. And I think all the major players in today's race have elected to go that way. OK, obviously earlier, it has maybe a little bit easier without those ruts. But remember, you have to come up. He's got number 20 as a start order, A.J. Kiff from the United States. Right now, though, it's Lassen Kuss from Norway. I think one of the best athletes on the entire circuit. He was second last week up there in your home country, your country. In Whistler, British Columbia, in the World Cup up there. Very long, challenging course in itself. Juice is very one of, one of the technical powers on the World Cup circuit. Look at the way he's attacking these gates. And you have to be on every one of these gates, so riding the tight line down Az Aztec and into the airplane turn. Here's a racer who's good at all of the events. Downhill, slow, super G, and of course downhill. Who's watching right here? 
And Chus has got the fastest time, but only by about a tenth. The way he turns and does so well on these turns, I think he's got a great chance to take the lead down through here. You know, when the snow is so catchy on the edges, you almost have to try and ride a little bit of weight on both skis. He has the lead right now by six hundredths of a second. Not much. Not much, but that may be all it takes in this run. And he has just behind second place for him. Lost some time on the bottom. So the combined gold medal winner from the 94 Olympics maybe would like to head that one turn back. Lasse Chus heading into Aztec. Once again, you can see how his edge is buried in that soft snow. It's really important for the athletes to start pushing their body forward as they come from the extreme flat onto the steep. Powering on that outside ski, and I talked about the importance of getting on the tight line. Lasse Chus did that very well. Excellent run down here. Bob Varsh is in the finish with our current leader. Arming Asinger watching our monitor here in the finish area, the leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. How is the course holding up? Uh, due to the new snow, it was very slow on top. We lost about five seconds to the, to the training run up there, or four, I don't know exactly, but it was quite slow. But the bottom section was uh, as fast as in the training runs, and th this one training run, and well, it seems that I had a pretty good run, and uh, with that HA, uh, no one else can blow me out. I think the course doesn't get better, and maybe that's my chance. Okay, well, good luck. Thanks. Here's a look at our current standings. Armin Assinger of Austria out front over Lassie Kuss and Artley Skaldal, Norway first and second. Coming up shortly, we will have A.J. Kitt. There's Armin Assinger looking up. You heard him mention, I hope A.J. doesn't blow me out. A.J. Kitt is coming off his most disappointing year ever. And the man from Rochester, New York, now relocated to Boulder, Colorado, is really hoping for a great effort. A.J. Kitt is the subject of this Visa Profile. In 1992, A.J. Kitt was the shooting star of the U.S. downhill team. He won in Valdez in France and played second at the famed Honeycomb in Kitzbühel, Austria. 1993 held just as much promise, but A.J. style fell from the sky right here in Aspen. No problem. He's taking the lead. Oh, my, by 83 hundredths of a second, and is he happy with it? But a bright day caught it over, and a apparent victory was taken away when the Ski Racing Federation canceled the race because of a small hole in the course. In short, A.J. was robbed. The deal that happened two years ago with uh, the race getting canceled when I was standing on top of the podium, uh, I think was really the uh, culmination of a, of a really weird season for me. And, uh, you know, at that point, I, I kind of was fed up, I think, with, with all the the political crap that was going on in ski racing. Um, and uh, it took its toll on me, and you know, my attitude went in the crapper, and I think everything else went with it. Then a two-year drought followed. AJ didn't post a single top five result until last week. Finally, a breakthrough. A second place finish at the Super G event, Bristol Mountain, British Columbia. Athletes in skiing get in a zone at, at one point in their career, uh, and usually it's one race, one day, one run, whatever, that will snap you into that groove. And uh, I was in that groove in 92, and, uh, and I popped out of it there for a while. And I think that this race in, in Whistler, uh, where I did really well, I think that snapped me back in it. This is the AJ Kit fan club. A fan club led by new wife Nancy. I've learned to find strength in my marriage, and uh, it's really something for me that's, that's helped me. Things feel good right now. I get out on the hill and I've got really good feelings. Again, I start to feel like I felt uh, two years ago when I was, when I was doing really hot. Um, and uh, I, I really think I'm back in it. We'll see her after this race, though. As part of Visa's continuing support of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to the U.S. ski team on behalf of A.J. Kitt. In a moment, we'll find out if AJ has found his zone. He's up next. Stay with us.
the downhill start house, high above Aspen, Colorado. A.J. Kidd of the United States is ready to make his bid for the Aspen Roche Cup. Once again, here's Bob Biatti and Todd Brooker. Okay, Todd, we've been talking about his getting stronger and stronger right now. But remember, that was a second in Super G. That's not downhill. The best one he's had in downhill was also in Whistler Mountain last week, and that was a 10th place. He hasn't been really downhill this year, but he did have the fastest training run here earlier this week. The only training run held. AJ has always succeeded a lot better when they've had more training runs. He likes to build up his time slower and slower. He likes to get uh, a little bit more experience with every run. This may, may have possibly hurt him because we only had one training run, as you said, a, a few days ago. Well, I can tell you one thing. I know him quite well, and he does not like to be poor. He wants to be a winner. When you get a lot of pride as a racer, you always have to hope that your skis are cooking along this top flats because you don't really have too much choice up there. And as he starts down into the turns right now, Excellent style, very compact, very quiet in his upper body. A little shaky through that first turn. Oh, 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 right there. I said before, you've got to be on a tight line down there as soon as you get over that soft snow. But look at this. Oh, my. He's got the best time so far by one full second. That's amazing. Even with that mistake. But you know, he's going along with it. He knows he's made a mistake, but I'm sure he can feel his skis are flying down here. It's getting a little bit rough down here, a lot rougher. He's learned a little more time. He's got it at 86. This should be in there. Let's see what it does. AJ Gill! That's a little time break. 58 hundredths of a second. I can't believe it. What a great run that is. That's a that's an eternity of ski racing. <laughs> Oh, what a run he had, and Armin Assinger is saying, what could I have done better? The only mistake that A.J. Kidd had was coming into the airplane turn where the course really starts breaking apart and getting really rough here. He's riding a good tuck, heading them the high line into fallaway turn. He's setting it up just about perfect, but as he starts standing on his outside ski, just about lost it right there. This ski just about went away on him. He gathers himself back together again, but boy, at least he looks like a plane that's lying right over into his inside ski. And now, right back. Almost lost it again. Oh, boy, a big twist for him there, but what a recovery. Two tremendous recoveries by A.J. Kidd. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Todd, he dodged the bullet. You've seen that many times in ski racing before. That was great. I mean, that was a great What recovery. And another of the hot Americans right now, 26-year-old Kyle Rasmussen from Angels Camp, California. He won a downhill in Bengen, Switzerland. He started number one in that event, and he shocked the entire world. It, he has really come on in downhill. Obviously, Kyle doesn't know what kind of run A.J. Kidd has had, but Kyle has got his own confidence going. As we watch them come down back to back, it's a good time to mention that this has become a real team. These coaches have worked together with the guys, they're all together, and all they do is think of speed, and they're cheering for each other. Rasmussen not as tight on the gates as I think he'd like to be coming through Aztec. We'll see how he handles airplane turn. And he has had a little bit of a problem there, exiting that turn very low and onto the flats. As his wife and two children here rooting him on today. Oh my goodness, seven, 3.7 seconds behind. And for some reason, and you have to think, of course, partly it's the way he's skiing, but a lot of it probably is the way his skis are running today. He's just not having a very hot day. And he almost got hooked his arm on a pole right there. Well, he is not attacking in the same method that A.J. Kidd was and heading himself down. He's off balance on the wing, but obviously his skis a little bit slow today as well. A uh, very shaky run. He's not going to be happy with anything he's done today. Downhill ski racing is a sport Bob for Bush. tough guys. There are none tougher than the man you're looking at right here, A.J. Kidd, but that was a very emotional performance. Can you put it in words, A.J.? Oh, it's very hard right now. Um, it's been a long time since I won a race, and I've been working really hard the last few years. Sorry. Armin Ossinger, Atli Skardal, everybody came over here to slap you on the back. I can't repeat their comments on family television. How does it feel to be the star of the tour again? Pretty good. Uh, it's, it's really great to win at home, and I think you know, there's a few of these guys that know what it feels like. And, just, uh, you know, after everything that's gone on with me in the last three years, it's uh, extra special to just do well here. <laughs> Especially after being the last time I won this race, they, they yanked it from me, and that was emotional too, so uh, it just feels really good. It's a relief. 
His last victory came in 1991. He suffered tremendous disappointment two years ago here in Aspen, but right now, A.J. Kidd is back where he wants to be and where he belongs atop the leaderboard. We'll be back with more dramatic downhill racing from Aspen. Stay with us. Welcome back to snowy Aspen, Colorado and the Aspen Roche Cup Men's World Cup Downhill. Bob Barsha, Bob Biatti, Todd Brooker with you. Here's a look at our race time temperatures in the mid 30s with scattered snow showers and six inches of new snow. In the previous days, the weather was about 15 degrees warmer, but we had about five times as much snow. Nevertheless, this Men's World Cup Downhill continues. Let's get back to Bob Biatti and Todd Brooker with our next racer. And that next racer from Switzerland is Franco Kamei. This 24-year-old, you know, I'm, I'm really amazed because the Swiss, of course, we have seen win for so many years, and they'll win again. But this is not their year. Why? Well, the Swiss have been out of the quiet this year, haven't they? No results whatsoever. We talk about time. This beat an injury. You your team is doing well. You get an awful lot of momentum, a lot of confidence in the dining room of your ho team hotel. And he's a second a and a half behind, excuse me for interrupting, a second and a half behind AJ, who said he hit that finish line. He's looking pretty good right now. AJ hit more than just good skiing going for him. He also had fast skis. He had a second lead on the top part of this course. Let's see if we can see as Cave comes down here. What maybe a little lack of confidence or whatever will make him going so much slower now. He's 1.8 behind. But you know what happens? The skiers come down, they see the ruts ahead of them, they see the deep tracks. Some of them get worried about it. They either stand up too much or they try cutting inside whatever they go off the normal line that they would have intended Kavane well behind in the starting gate it's Kerry Mullen 25 year old from Vance Alberta who won this race last year but also is not having a very good season Look at the way he's skating on the start. He knows how important it is to be fast, but he might have taken one too many skates. He didn't have the fastest time in the first six seconds there. Trying to hold a tuck down here in the initial part of Aztec. Let's see if we can pick out the difference between going for speed and being... Oh, no, he's got it. He's having all kinds of problems. Whoa, boy, was that a recovery. Oh, is he lucky he didn't take a big fall? Oh, my. Mullen has just not had very good luck. The last couple races he has not finished. He was 19th in Whistler, but he's pushing himself too hard. He tried to hold the tuck too long into some of these turns. Watch the way his outside ski, the ski on the left of the screen, will start catching edges. Skis all over the place there. It's just one recovery after another one now as it's pure survival blasting through that gate. Oh boy, another disappointing weekend for Kerry Mullen. This course stuff is getting tougher. It's snowing harder, and an Austrian ready now, Peter Rezak. It's been a good downhill for the team, though. You make a good point, though, Bob. Not only is the snow coming down a little, a little bit harder, but that also affects the light conditions here. We have big ruts that are starting to develop. This course is starting to break up, and the skiers that are coming down now are having a hard time seeing where those ruts are. Over second and make it switch up behind Gus Musen, so we know he can race like all the Austrian team members. And another skier way out wide in the soft snow rehack at the bottom of that turn. And the time shows up right away in his intermediate time. 1.4 seconds behind another mistake down there. It's definitely getting choppy. 
There's no doubt about that. This course is not going to get any better. But you can tell with some of the skiers that have confidence in their line that are just powering right through the rut. Some of them, like Rahab right now, boy, he's got no confidence at all. He's just trying to survive. Okay, Bob Bosher is at the finish line. Bob. Well, for every up, there's a down after AJ's terrific performance. Kyle Rasmussen is with me, and I don't think that was the run you were looking for, was it, Kyle? Uh, obviously not. I, don't, I have no idea what happened. Those are the worst ones, you know. I thought I had a good run, and I'm in uh, last place at the moment. So uh, obviously something didn't go right today. Well, in looking at the course, it appears to be deteriorating. Is there any specific spot that, that you noticed that's a, a problem? I didn't think there was much problem anyway. It's a little bit flat light. You can't see. And I think that's where the problems are coming in. You can't see the holes, and uh, it could get dangerous. But uh, I think it's, it's plenty good to run. You came down. You've got to feel, I would guess, pretty good for AJ after his performance taking the lead with a, with a tremendously emotional run. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys love it. That's what you wanted to see. You wanted to see AJ win, and that's great. You know, Obviously, I'm disappointed. Okay, thanks, Kyle. Hey, Kyle, I have to tell you one thing. We want to see anybody win who has a great run. And you have your day again. Ready to come down the course is Daniel Mart. 33 years of age, won this race in 1992, but hasn't had a great good year. Hurt his back in uh, Kidsville in the training run, and that's where really we've slowing him down. Well, he's 32 years old now. Your parts start giving up when you've been racing downhill for a long time, and I don't know what Mara is doing. He's staying. It almost looks like he's coming to a stop now. Mara just pulled off the course, shaking his hands. What do you think? Maybe the visibility uh, is motioning towards his goggles. He obviously has a problem. He can't see where he's going. Oh, that's too bad. Marcus Foser, 27-year-old from Lichtenstein. Started in the 60s in Val Gardena, Italy in 1993 and won the entire event. Well, the big problem that Mara might be complaining about, you see the snow is falling, it's fairly light, it's cooler up at the top, but it's still about halfway down this mountain. The temperature warms up quite a bit. The snow that is falling down is a lot wetter, and I think it's starting to stick on the skier's goggles, so we've got a lot of complications today. Yeah, but let's remember something. A.J. Kent didn't start with an early number where the course was good. He started with number 20 where that course was rough. I think it's a lot of confidence in how you attack. I think you're right, Bob. First thing this morning, I wouldn't have guessed that number 20 was going to do him any favors at all, but he has managed to break through all that difficult conditions on the way down. Foster's having some problems in Aztec. The difference is whether you're feeling your way through these turns right now, and they are tough. Certainly, it's easy to sit here and talk about it than to be out there doing it. And the difference of going out and really attacking and going as fast as you can. Oh, geez, almost five seconds yeah. behind. But uh, this is a real contrast of somebody who is so confident, like A.J. Kitt just bulldogging on the way down. Marcus Foser is just standing there letting the course come at him. He isn't confident on his edge. He isn't solid on his edge. He's all over the place down here. Over five seconds behind right now. And he's down, down. Foser down and into the fencing. All new fencing been put in this year. Tremendous safety precautions, Todd. Looks like he's not hurt. But you know, Bob, the condition's really starting to come down now. We see more snow in the air, bigger flakes down here. Marcus Foser, though, his problem isn't just the weather. His problem is his attitude and his confidence. Not pressing that bump, not really being in a good position. Down here, catching an inside edge. And that was because he was leaning in. And that, that's something that racers do when they're not confident about what, where they're going. It looked like he was leaning in and then also kind of just backing off a little bit. Oh, gee. Ready. As the rest of the racers wait, that's exactly what they're going to have to do. Well, Officials have just called a temporary course hold. Uh, we're well, getting, we're, we're getting some take a look at this race course. A little bit of snow here, but not much. And it's overcast. As you heard the earlier skiers saying, there's not a necessarily a problem with the race course itself, although it is bumpy. As you heard Bobby Addy mention just a moment ago, it's visibility that appears to be the problem. Daniel Marr complained that the snow has been clouding up his goggles. There you see A.J. Kitt from the United States Ski Team. He is the leader, but he's been in this position for and had the victory taken away. Let's see what happens here at Aspen. Stay with us.
We've got an interesting situation developing here in Aspen and another one coming up following our coverage of World Cup skiing on the Senior PGA Tour or final round coverage of the FHP Healthcare Classic coming up right after skiing has been reduced to a sudden death playoff between Bruce Devlin and Dave Eichelberger. Senior PGA Tour action from Ojai, California where they've had a lot of rain coming up at 5.30 p.m. Eastern following World Cup skiing. Now to our situation here in Aspen. We are in a course hold while officials take a look at the course and a look up in the sky to get a weather report. Visibility, we understand, is the problem. A.J. Kidd of the United States is our current leader, exactly the position he was in two years ago when that race was canceled. But we have a racer now ready for the start. Once again, Bob Biatti and Todd Brooker are standing by to bring him down. Well, Bob, it does look like they're going to start racing. I mean, could this be something we saw two years ago when A.J. was sitting at the bottom with the lead and the race got called off and he lost that victory? Certainly hope not. We're looking at Jigande from Switzerland. Well, the problem, Bob, for the race jury, they want to get the bulk of the skiers down to count it as a, as a full and official race. And if they don't get the, the majority of the skiers down, anything could happen. That's up to them. While we're watching Jigga Day, it's a good time to mention that what, the, what the rules are as far as the FIS is concerned. Well, and they're not very definitive. It's not any certain number that have to go down the race course. There are 80 who are entered here today. 79 actually, because one was hurt in the training round. And it all is going to depend on what the jury decides at the end. But one thing is for sure, nobody is coming anywhere close to AJ Kidd's time. Now is Liman. Where's Liman from Switzerland? Another of the Swiss ski races. A good, good downhill here. Eighth in Whistler Mountain last week. Another one of the skiers, though, that benefited because he was so high up in the starting order. Later skiers there didn't have that problem. He was just about went down in the initial part of this course, trying to give it a couple extra pulls, but that snow is so soft up there, you got to be careful. There's only one, one major downhill, but that wasn't a bad one. That was the World Championship when it had in Japan in 1993. You know, I'm so impressed with the way Kit skied down this course. He was so strong in his edges. In contrast, so you look at Lehman, and he looks a little bit tentative as far as I'm concerned. Well, you can also see those skis just flying all over the place. There's one of those dampers on them, but nothing will dampen them now with all those little bumps in there, ruts in there. AJ looks in good shape. I think the biggest problem he's got right now is, will enough racers get down so they make this an official race? Well, that's the important thing as Lehman heads down towards the bottom. He is well behind another skier. I think this course has deteriorated badly enough that nobody's going to have a chance of catching him. And he's way behind. And at the finish line, everybody is holding their breath, and we're still getting another racer. Will they get enough down for this to be an official race? Well, that's going to be in the hands of the jury. <laughs> Sooner or later, because I don't think they're going to be able to continue. It's getting so chopped up. Now we're watching Lindbergh from Norway. Well, everything seems to be happening at once, Bob. The snowflakes are getting bigger. They're starting to intensify a lot. As we stand down here at the finish, we're all still covering ourselves. Let's see how he's being down through here. Tired, it's easy to say to go out there and attack, but when you can't see these little bumps either, the light is very flat. It seems to be snowing a little bit harder, too. It makes it even more difficult. Lindbergh heading into the top of Aztec right now. Pushing those hands forward as the skiers plunge down the steep face into town. You hear a little bit of hard snow underneath there. They've managed to push away a lot of the soft snow, but this is the problem area right in here. An airplane turning through the bottom of the Dago Road. Okay, you recreational skiers, think about what it's like when the light gets flat and it gets hard to see. Now think about what it's like when you're going 80 miles an hour doing that. That's what these guys are going through. With most of the skiers at this point, they see those ruts coming at them. They figure the only option they have is to try and dive inside, get off the normal line that they might have taken. But that might have dire consequences to a lot of them. So, oh, no, 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 get off of his skis. Looks like he hit just one of those little ruts. And right into that fencing again. Oh, boy, let's hope he's not hurt. The fence doing its job of keeping him out of the trees. Down here, obviously, you didn't see there's a little section where the hill comes right back uphill and his knees just came up, thumped his chest, and smack right into those things for as much as they stop you from going into the trees. Quite often you get hurt from being tangled up in there. Well, the one thing, at least he slid and didn't flip over. No problem. Here. Oh, okay, here's Daniel Marr. Daniel Marr at the finish line with A.J. Kidd. And, you know, I think they're talking it over as two old veterans might. Well, they're both talking about what the weather conditions are doing, and maybe this race won't continue. Who knows? 
Well, we hope it continues okay. for AJ's sake. AJ Kitt back in the finish area. More than 30 skiers are now down. This is an official race by the rules. What are your thoughts, AJ? Well, mixed feelings. You know, I'm really happy with the way I skied today and, and winning the race, but um, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of guys falling. I think the visibility's not very good, and, you know, when, when that's combined with, the, with rough conditions, it's dangerous, and I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Danny Morris stopped on the course, and you just spoke with him. What did he have to say? He said the snow's kind of wet up there, and it's sticking to the goggles a little bit, and it's tough to see. And uh, he just said he's got, he had no chance to see where he was going and, and see what the terrain was like. And I think he probably made a smart move by pulling up because uh, when you're really going for it and you want to win a race, you know, you, you, don't, you don't ski you know, at 80%. And, uh, you know, it, he didn't want to you know, make any mistakes and, and take a chance on getting hurt. And, you know, this is too bad with uh, Lindbergh, the Norwegian kid. I think he had a pretty bad fall. Well, you've done what you had to do today. Are you aware that Peekaboo Street won over in Saalbach? Yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, she's, she's on a roll. She's won, what, four downhills now, and she was second in another one and second in the Super G. So she's having a great season, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I can be on the podium with her today. It's kind of nice for American downhill skiing. It's uh, looking like we're dominating a little bit here. No question about it. A great job. I hope this is the beginning of great things for you. Word from the officials is that Lindbergh from Norway has a broken arm, but he is otherwise all right. That's good news. We are in another course hold. We'll be back to Aspen, Colorado in a moment. There's A.J. Kidd here in Aspen, Colorado with his family, a very happy Nancy, his new wife. I want to tell you, he hopes this holds up. But also, what a great day for the entire U.S. team. We have Peekaboo Street, who's been in Saalbach, Austria. And here she is, just earlier today, coming down the downhill. Peekaboo Street winning her fourth downhill. That's more downhills than any American man or woman has ever won. Boy, I am proud of Peekaboo Street. Taking another look, Todd, what do you think? She's hot, isn't she? Oh, boy, not only she, did she win the race, she won all three training runs, too. She dominated. Oh, big flight there. Oh, she likes it tonight. You know, we have a course hold here. Things are not going very well. But, you know, if this holds up, can you imagine having, having both an American man and a woman? I'll tell you, I, for one, am very, very excited. <laughs> Let's go back to Bob Vosher. Bob! One more time. I've been talking with officials down here in the finish area, and here's where we stand right now. The four members of the International FIS jury are spread out on the course, consulting with one another by radio, trying to gather information about the condition of the course, the visibility on the course, and even what the long-term weather conditions are. Now, contrary to what I believed coming in, there is not a hard and fast formula as to whether or not the race becomes official after a certain number of skiers come down. The jury will decide, no matter how many skiers have made it down the course, whether or not it will go into the books as an official race. Obviously, the man that that most prominently affects is right here with me, A.J. Kitt. A.J., two years ago, you stood here as the leader in the Finnish Corral, and the race was pulled out from under you. What's going through your mind right now? Hmm. If they can't do it again. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, you know, I don't think they can run any more racers right now. It's too dangerous. The visibility is terrible, and it's snowing pretty hard. And I'm sure that it's probably snowing harder on the top. So, I mean, for safety's sake, they can't run any, anybody else. But um, I'm just hoping that they'll that they'll decide that it's an official race, and you know, let me finally win one in Aspen. And we will wait with him. Thanks, AJ. But the longest wait of all has to be the guys at the top. They seem pretty loose and relaxed. 
I don't think they're going to race today, though. Stay with us. We'll be back. Okay, up here at Aspen, Colorado, let's take a look at the standing so far because I want to tell you, it's not a bad day for the United States. We don't know yet. At least I don't know what the results are going to be because the jury is trying to figure that out. But A.J. Kidd has the lead. Asaga from Austria, second place, and then two Norwegians, third and fourth. Gadina is in fifth place. You know, this is quite a day. And Vipolini in sixth place. Well, Bob Vasha, maybe you know more at the finish line. It keeps uh, snowing here anyway. Well, after waiting an extra 24 hours to perform and what has seemed like 24 hours since the race was stopped, we're going to declare A.J. Kitt the winner of the Aspen Roche Cup. Congratulations, A.J. Thanks, Bob. Uh, too bad we got bad weather here, but, um, you know, once again, I guess I'm cursed in Aspen. Um, I, hope the, I hope the Fist decides to officially give me this race. It'd be nice to get the points, and it'd be nice to uh, maybe redeem a little bit of controversy that started here two years ago. I think the real point is how well you are skiing right now. This must make you feel pretty good going to Norway. Yeah, the one consolation uh, for me today is that today's not the last race of the season. Uh, there's, there's still two more downhills and there's three more Super Gs. And, and uh, I'm on a roll right now with my confidence and my abilities are, are uh, really moving along well here. So, you know, in the next five races, I'm, I'm really looking forward to some more good results. Well, we've been able to talk to some of the other finishers. No question, A.J. Kitt was the fastest skier on the mountain today. Congratulations. Bob, give A.J. a big attaboy for me. What a day for him. I'll tell you, he really came and attacked this course, didn't he? Well, you know, the jury might be kicking the decision around for Walt, but the one thing that is going to stand true is A.J. smoked the field, and he had a bad, nasty course to put up with. It's, it really had a lot of ruts, and he started number 20, but he dominated on this course, and the only training one he wanted. And as we're going to see in the replays, he comes around airplane turn, almost sitting back and falling down there, but it was sheer determination that got him to the bottom fast. Well, I think that's the thing we really should discuss here. Today. He was great off the top part of the course where it was wet, but then he got on the lower part where he started number 20 and it got choppy. But he looked like he was mad. He had something to prove. He just kept attacking. The snow conditions really changing down here. AG Kid starting to lose a little bit of time, and it, you really had to be aggressive in this kind of snow. It was extremely tricky. Edge catching was a, a possibility, but man, look at him come across the finish. Half a second ahead, he dominated this course. Great day for him. Well, it certainly was a great result for A.J. Kidd. As far as we're concerned, he's our winner, and you know I have to be proud of him. They're going to be discussing this for months, uh, but that's the sport of ski racing, isn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> you, know, you know how dangerous it is when they start discussing things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You know, as far as the U.S. ski team, what a day. Peekaboo winning in Austria and A.J. winning right here in Aspen. We're very proud of the U.S. ski team, I must say. I'll go along with that, Bob. So the race is over, but our story is not yet complete. Stand by for more from Aspen, Colorado, while officials decide whether, in fact, A.J. Kitt is the official winner of the Aspen Roche Cup. This ESPN World of Skiing presentation, the Aspen Roche Cup Men's World Cup Downhill from Aspen has been brought to you by Tag Heuer, official timekeeper of the 1995 North American Ski World Cup. And by Saab and your local Saab dealers who invite you to test drive the Saab 900 and new 900 Turbo Coupe and Convertible. We'll be back for a final word from Aspen, Colorado. Stay with us on a very dramatic World Cup weekend. We'll be back.
Welcome back to Aspen, Colorado, where the news is not good, it is great. Setting a new record for deliberations, the FIS jury has determined that A.J. Kidd has in fact won the Aspen Roche Cup downhill, the eighth victory for the U.S. ski team in 1995. We hope you've enjoyed sharing it with us as A.J. hoists the Andre Roche Cup and a well-deserved check. Coming up next, Gary Koch and Jim Kelly are standing by for a sudden death playoff at the FHP Healthcare Classic between Bruce Devlin and Dave Eichelberger. That's coming up next. For Bob Biatti and Todd Brooker, I'm Bob Barsha. So long, everyone.